consultant at, uh, at IBM. And uh, at that time, we had an internal organization called ODIS, which stands for On Demand Innovation Services. And the idea was to bring innovation faster to the market by working closely together with uh, research. So consultants and IBM research working together. And then when 9-11 happened, uh, with new regulations coming from the U.S. government about cargo monitoring, we started to look into how we could address these regulations, these new challenges, and, and make uh, supply chain more visible, more secure, more efficient. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, yeah, we, we started uh, with, with uh, three researchers, and then we added people, consultants, software developers, etc. And for different reasons, IBM then uh, stopped the uh, journey in uh, 2007. And uh, I left IBM and uh, founded the company RVM together with two other partners. And since then, we are now offering real-time cargo monitoring services in the market. And it was, let's, let's say, say, I never had a specific education on supply chain, but uh, over the last 15 years now doing this, uh, I, I came, I, and it's learning by doing, yeah. Now, can we start with uh, maybe defining what is um, supply chain risk, visibility, and integration? Well, it's a broad, broad topic, yes. The, the visibility, I think, currently, I mean, if you look at the global supply chain, and if you, if you focus, for example, just on container shipments with 100 over 100 million of shipments worldwide uh, taking place every year and all the incidents happening, uh, it's, it's kind of obvious that uh, for shippers who actually carry all the risk, the visibility is not given. So uh, the, the, the party suffering most from these risks, from this uh, kind of black box in, in supply chain, uh, in international or global supply chains, are the shippers and there we wanted to bring in some some benefits uh, solution and we try to now by uh, using new kind of iot technologies uh, to bring in visibility by detecting revealing data at the edge of the network so where the cargo is detect what's going on uh, how is the cargo doing is there shock is there any kind of temperature humidity whatever it is and uh, analyze the data in combination with some other data streams and you could call it also integration so combining it with other available data but always in direct connection with the cargo where it is out there in the network and then this combination we think that can bring in the additional required visibility how is this um visibility how is it done effectively uh, what, what do you to, mean by uh, effectively? Um, uh, for creating, the, the doing this, um, getting the visibility into the supply chain, um, how, how is it done um, in practice? Well, what we have is we have, let's say, three components. We as RVM now, we have three components. Uh, one is what I call the sensing component. So that's this piece of hardware, this IoT device huh, that collects the data transmits the data in real time to what I call the second component, the analytics component. That's a piece of software that collects the data from the devices out there, combines it, as I said before, with other data streams. So, for example, vessel data, weather data, uh, risk uh, uh, parameters from, from other companies, etc. And then based on business rules, defines actionable information out of it, which could be a report, which could be a notification, plus based on the collected data, that's another buzzword, the big data, huh? we then create uh, historical and dynamic risk profiles out of it. And uh, then you have a third component because we offer everything as a service. We have an operations department which makes sure that the devices are always operational, that they arrive on time at our client site. When the shipment is over, we pick them up again. All the system is working properly, so our clients basically have nothing to do. They pay as per uh, they pay per use. Uh, but they don't have to do any investments, they don't have to do any admin work, nothing. It's all, it's a full end-to-end -end service operated by us. What type of uh, challenges are, that you, do you have to face when doing this? 
Well, the, the challenges are, let's say, we are doing international shipments. So, uh, because it's a new business, uh, it's kind of a disruptive business model, I would call it. Uh, for example, these devices are not known by several customs worldwide. And uh, you don't have yet any uh, regulations or approvals which are worldwide accepted. So if you come into one customs, it's, it might be accepted, not a problem at all. If you go to the next customs organization, then suddenly they say, ah, we don't like these devices or what is it exactly? Give us all the details. So you first have to go through an approval process. This can slow down the, 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 uh, the ramp up of, the, of our service in some countries. And uh, the, the other aspect is, again, because it's kind of a disruptive service, clients will have to change the way they do business. And that is sometimes a time consuming uh, process because the clients themselves, they have to define their business model differently. They have to change their processes. They have to have new KPIs. And that's sometimes something that you cannot do overnight. But from a service perspective, it, it's, it's our, our, basically our intention to make the service easy to use, simple setup, uh, and, and easy going. Are there any um, success stories or um, some examples of success? Uh, well, a company I'm allowed to mention because it's a lot of companies are not yet there where they say, okay, you're allowed to use us as a reference. But one of the companies, it's it's one of our very first client and biggest client, that's the company called Nestle. And, and yes, there uh, we achieve improvements which are which are quite significant. I'm often obviously not allowed to mention any data, etc. But uh, they achieve major major benefits out of this. Yeah. Any uh, final recommendations? I think if you look now into into logistics in general, or whatever you want to call it, supply chain logistics. Uh, this is, as I feel, this is going to be one of the next major industry that is going through major changes. So logistics has not changed over the last 100, 200 years. And now with the new uh, possibilities, uh, te technical possibilities uh, with IoT, with big data, with blockchain, this industry will go through major changes in the next few years. And, uh, well, not only we as a so solution offering party in this game, but also the clients, uh, meaning the shippers, the logistics companies should be prepared for that. Open enough to, to, to start pilots to, to, to uh, uh, yeah, execute on these new kind of uh, business models. Thanks for sharing today, Stefan. You're more than welcome, Dustin. And I hope we will talk soon again about another topic. <laughs>